Justin Haskins. He is the co-author of The Great Reset. He is also the editorial director of the Heartland Institute and editor-in-chief of StoppingSocialism.com. Uh, hello, Justin. How are you? Oh, I'm doing so well, Glenn. How are you? You're doing so well. Good. You got a little touch of COVID, I hear. <laughs> Yeah, That's just, yeah. just a time. Uh, Justin, you have been one of the guys who have been working with these uh, legislatures. You have another one um, in New Hampshire. They're going to vote on it either today or tomorrow. How's that going? Right. Well, uh, as we're seeing in many places across the country that are working on this issue, and there are about 20 states doing something on an anti-ESG bill, the biggest opposition we're seeing is in is is coming because all of these bills are being proposed in states where republicans have most of the political power if not all of it um what we're right. seeing is that it's the biggest opposition is coming from republicans and the republicans who are arguing against it it's not a majority of them it's usually just a, a small group of them but they're saying this is a free market issue and and uh you know you just need to let banks and financial institutions and all these people discriminate against individuals and other businesses no, as they see fit because that's, if free, it were, that's their argument. If, if it was a bank, great, but it's all of the banks coordinating with the government and big business on an agenda that doesn't, I mean, by their own words, they say it's not based on profit. It is based on, on uh, environmental standards social standards on making the world a better place well that's not the free market man that's not the job of the bank that's not the job of nabisco no that's that's exactly right these these are massive often multinational corporations that have no allegiance to the united states at all in many cases that have massive amounts of their ownership is overseas they don't have any allegiance to the Constitution. They have special legal and tax advantages that the rest of us don't have. They regularly receive bailouts and government funding that regular people don't get. They work hand in hand with government. Many of them have lucrative government contracts. Uh, they get trillions and trillions of dollars have been pumped into the financial system through the Federal Reserve over the past 10 years. The only reason this system is able to exist because they're all gonna get rich no matter what they do with ESG mm -hmm. scores. So the idea that this is some sort of a, a free market system is the most ludicrous thing imaginable. There's nothing free market oh, about is. this at all. Listen to this. Um, this uh, came in from Alex Wong. He's a uh, reporter, uh, and he's been watching this. He said, in his Build Back Better legislation, President Joe Biden wanted to spend $570 billion over the next decade on green causes, mostly focused on climate change. Fortunately, that bill seems to be dead, and yet now the Biden Greens, that's to say the Green administration, have their eye on a bigger pot of money with which to pursue their climate agenda, the assets of American banks. These assets total nearly $23 trillion, according to the Federal Reserve. A crucial vote on whether or not this sneaky policy will proceed will be held, I think, today when the Senate Banking Committee votes on whether to advance Biden's Federal Reserve nominees, particularly the nomination of Sarah Bloom Raskin. Uh, the Federal Reserve System, the Fed, as it's called, is the principal body that oversees and regulates banking in the U.S. After the failure of Build Back Better, the Fed is Biden's preferred mechanism for advancing his version of the Green New Deal. After all, the Fed has vast power over the banks, including whether or not they can lend money to or otherwise finance fossil fuel companies. From the Biden point of view, this seems like a clever strategy. It has been said of the banks, that's where the money is. Biden wants to gain control of the Federal Reserve's seven-member board of governors. Of these seven slots, three are currently vacant. On January 14th, the White House named three candidates to fill those slots, all of whom are friendly to the green scheme and to the Great Reset. If the trio is confirmed by the Senate, they will join a fourth Democrat already on the board, and the left will have gained control of the Fed. What do you think of that? I think that this is absolutely the path forward for them. And, and we don't have to guess. They don't, we don't need speculation. They've been very open that this is what's going on. When they had that meeting in Glasgow recently uh, for COP26, 
Uh, they announced, and this was backed by Joe Biden, it's got lots of support from the Biden administration. John Kerry was openly in favor of it. The Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero. You just mentioned 20-something trillion dollars in the United States tied up in banks. Well, the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero has more than 450 banks, insurers, and asset managers in dozens of countries around the world with total assets pledged toward enacting this whole Great Reset ESG scheme of $130 trillion. So the idea that this is just something that the little guy can, well, you know, if your local bank's discriminating against you, just go to a different bank. Oh, if a local corporation is discriminating, you just go to a, just buy from a different corporation. They're all going to be in on it. They're not going to have any choice. And the people who resist are going to be pushed out. They're already being pushed out by massive asset managers on Wall Street, left BlackRock and State Street Global Advisors and others. So you will have gonna, to go along with this. I'm going to come back with Justin Haskins because I'm going to tie this in to what the Treasury Secretary or the Finance Minister of Canada announced yesterday with their emergency powers. This is what the Great, Race, Great Reset does. They've just done it with emergency powers, and we'll talk about that in 60 seconds. I want to play Canada's Minister of Finance uh, yesterday during the Trudeau press conference on emergency powers. Listen carefully to what she says here. First, we are broadening the scope of Canada's anti-money laundering and terrorist financing rules so that they cover crowdfunding platforms and the payment service providers they use. These changes cover all forms of transactions, including digital assets, such as cryptocurrencies. The illegal blockades have highlighted the fact that crowdfunding platforms and some of the payment service providers they use are not Critical. fully captured under the Proceeds of Crime and Terrorist Financing Act. Okay, stop. Everybody is focusing on, you're saying that these guys are terrorists? The truckers are terrorists? No, it goes farther than that. You are funding a terrorist organization. So by default, you also are involved in terrorism. But even beyond that, this is aimed at, you know, give, send, go. Because the other crowdsource, uh, crowdfunding source decided they this is beyond this is too dangerous they're not going to do it because they just don't like these truckers they're terrorists you know so they pulled out and tried to hold the money so give send go came up and they said we'll do it this is not just aimed at them give send go requires some sort of mechanism another party to take your credit card and process from your bank in to give send go they're attacking anyone like they will with the blaze when they come and they will come to shut down the blaze they will say you know what the blaze can do whatever they want of course if you are somebody who is a payment processor <laughs> i wouldn't be involved in that and that cuts off all of our funding that cuts off our banking our our ability to reach out to you and ask you for your credit card number so you can be a monthly subscriber. That's what's coming, gang. And they're doing it right now just under uh, the auspices of uh, the truckers and this emergency, uh, uh, you know, dangerous terrorist activity. Do I have this right or wrong, Justin? You know, you're 100% right. This is actually not really about truckers. This is not even really about just what's going on in Canada. This is about resistance at, and, and, at any level, anywhere in the world. You're yes. not allowed to yes. resist. We're going to close all the off-ramps. That's what this is fundamentally about. I would get your, ma your money out of those big banks, quite honestly, and I would put it in a local credit union or a very, very, very locally owned bank, something that keeps all of their money and doesn't have ties to anybody else. Uh, but uh, it's time to protect yourself. The, uh, the hordes are at the gate.